Welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast featuring women who have gone against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. These warriors have gained respect by taking the reins to create progressive change in a male-dominated arena. They have inspiring stories to tell filled with real-life joy, passion, blood, sweat, and tears. Hey, 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 this is Evolve Women's MMA, and I'm your host, Shelley Devon. So this week's guests include four women who are set to compete against one another in the first female Muay Thai tournament here in Massachusetts. The event will take place at Melrose Memorial Hall on October 20th at No Boundary Fights. So the question is, who will be the last woman standing? Will it be Emily Kelly from Sityatong Camp in Somerville? Or could it be Maria Kritikos from Bon Muay Thai in New Hampshire? Or perhaps Elizabeth Silvera fighting out of Hard Knocks from Brockton, Massachusetts? Or could it be all the way from Philadelphia fighting out of eight limbs, Mary Brulator? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But in t- before that, I have them on the show today along with one of the founders from No Boundary Fights. I'd like to welcome them all. So, hey, welcome everybody. I, I'm so glad to have you here. I know we're waiting on two more, but um, I'm sure they'll pop in once they finish their training because I know Saturdays you guys do, uh, hopefully you guys are training for the fight next week. <laughs> they better be training. Yeah. Um, i like to welcome to Mo, who's, who's one of the founders of No Boundary Fight. And I'd like you to give us a little, a little info about your event that's coming up next week. Oh, so uh, No Boundary Fight has been uh, in Massachusetts with the only sanction, uh, Muay Thai sanction uh, in here in Massachusetts. And uh, we've been uh, licensed since 2016. We've done several shows. This is our seventh show. Um, wow. We've done really good in uh, Mansfield and Melrose. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of, uh, we brought so many people from uh, outside the state and outside the country also. So our show is getting big and uh, a lot of talents. I I had no idea that you had it out. You, you've been bringing in people from outside the country too. Yeah, we did. We did. We brought on the last show. We brought Ella um, from um, Netherlands. Nice. And she was facing Sarah. It was great fight. It was great fight. Five round, two minutes was awesome. Wow. It was really good. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I know there hasn't been um, a Muay Thai promotion in this area for quite some time, other than in Rhode Island. That was like the closest right. uh, place to have a show. And, and generally, too, they didn't, they didn't have too many. They had female fights, but not too many. And yeah. it was always hard to get an opponent. And it seems like every show that you've had, you, you're, you're really doing well with um, having several female bouts. Well, we, we definitely have a lot of females, a lot of talented females around um, either here in Massachusetts or New York or Pennsylvania. I mean, like we bring from everywhere and did so many girls. Every show we bring many talented women and the females did really good. I mean, like uh, yeah, the crowd loved them and they do good too. So that's what I figure. Um, I always see a last man standing. I've seen eight men tournament for men's tournaments and it's never been done for women tournaments and every show we do we'll find so many talented females that we could have done it with them um then that's uh i asked some people if they want to do it and then since we get the idea of uh, doing a four women's tournaments and you can see these talented females or four of them they're really tough tough girls yes um and and it, it isn't their first rodeo either. These these women have experience no. fighting too. They're they very they, very experienced. Now we could have we could have done it with somebody like a beginner. We have to had uh, all experienced uh, females. Um, like uh, Mary, she has a lot of t- a lot of she's talented. She have a lot of experience. Maria Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Emily, she had the quite experience, but she's underdog. She's not. Because we put her with so many 
tough females, she, she does very, very well. So uh-huh. maybe people will, will question, well, no, uh, uh, Emily doesn't have that many experience, but she's very, very talented and uh, she will bring the heat to this tournament. I think so. I, and uh, from what I gather that uh, you ladies, you, you do not know who, you're, who you will be fighting. No, they won't. So, so we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it interesting. <laughs> we're gonna definitely keep it interesting. That's why we kept it until the day of the fight. So these four females, they were prepared for each person and each style. They have to adapt to each style of these uh, four women. Um, so that way, when they come into the fight. I mean, they are prepared. They're going to pick the name, and whoever comes up, they're going to fight. Wow. That's it. So we'll have uh, two fights in the beginning and the winners at the end of the, of the show. That's great. Wow, that sounds very exciting. It sounds like a really fun night uh, for people that are in the Massachusetts or Melrose area to, to get tickets and to, to come out and, and see this event because it's really exciting. I, I, I would like to get to the ladies now and, and um, find out a little bit more about them so um, we can drum up some attention to them and maybe people will pick out, oh, who I want to win. And maybe there'll be some betting like in Thailand. How they bet. <laughs> know, can we do that? On this who topic? knows? We, we could. Yeah, every, everything's possible. Yeah, right? <laughs> I just remember that was what was going down when I was in Thailand. Everybody's like, Ben, who's going to win? Well, I just, I just know what our sports are Muay Thai. It's, uh, it's all about discipline. And, uh, and it's, it's great. It's great um, discipline. You see a lot of respect inside the ring, outside the ring, um, which is huge. That's, that's not a lot of sports that have uh, this type of respect. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I like in, um, is, is when they, they go around the ring and they, they do their little ritual. The Y crew. The Y crew. And they do, and each, each school has a different Y crew. And, and um, I'm, I'm, I always enjoy seeing that. Will we be seeing that from any of you girls? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maria, Maria does it all the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, let's start with Maria. Maria, can you give us a little bit about you? Um, I know you're seven and one, and are you considered uh, seven and zero? Oh, but yeah, seven and zero. Oh. Seven and zero. Oh, sorry, I, forgive me. I, and um, uh, you are kind of. Are you the reigning kind of? Do you have a champ? Are you a champion? Yep, I have two title belts. Uh, the uh, no boundary fight, actually. Okay. okay. <laughs> Very good. Twice. And, yep. Two times. Wow, that's awesome. And what what got you into Muay Thai kickboxing? Um, I did karate for a very long time, and I realized it wasn't very physical. Like, it wasn't in my face. I never really got punched because they don't do normal sparring. Um, they do, like, touch sparring. And I wanted to really know what it was like in case like I ever got into a bad situation and I didn't want to get into shock or anything. What was it like to get punched in the face and Mm -hmm. actually hit hard? Um, And once I started doing Muay Thai, I just didn't ever want to stop. So you didn't mind getting punched in the face? No, (laughs) not too bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's really cool. I'm going to move down to Emily. Emily's here from, um, and, and Maria, you're from um, Ban, Ban Muay Thai in, in, in New Hampshire. Hampshire. Where in yep. New Hampshire is that? Lebanon, New Hampshire. Oh, so you, you've got a little, a little drive, huh? Yeah, about okay. two hours. Yep. Okay, wow. So you are traveling. I, I wasn't sure where it was because I hadn't heard of it around here. I'm thinking, that's in Massachusetts, isn't it? But it's not. It's, a, it's a, okay. Oh, she loves us. That's why she comes to Massachusetts. All yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then we have Emily from um, Sitiatong. And... You're, you're, you're actually, you're, you're the one with the least experience from what I understand. I didn't know that. I, I just know you as having, you know, like you've been in a, you've had a few fights and, and you're doing well. So what got you into Muay Thai? I already know, but. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm three and two. So I've, I've had five fights. Most of them were this year. I, I fought four times 
uh, so far. Awesome. Um, but I, I started getting into, um, I got into Muay Thai from going to a gym where it was like cardio um, kickboxing. And from there, I just was totally hooked on it. And I guess kind of similar to Maria, I just wanted to um, get more of a feel of the, the real thing. Mm-hmm. So I started uh, trading Muay Thai and I just totally was absolutely obsessed with it. Very cool. It's easy to get obsessed with it. I know I am too. I'm like, I started uh, years ago, but just in a cardio kickboxing class and then, and then discovered more I was like, I found my home, you know, like just love it. And, um, welcome Elizabeth. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Did you just get back from training too? I think everybody was probably training today. Mm. Uh, I got back around two. Yeah, nice. Oh, I show and everything from home. So, what got you into Muay Thai kickboxing? Mm, I don't know. It's something I've always wanted to do since I was younger. Um, I did team sports, which wasn't really my thing, mm-hmm. and I just wanted combat sports because I felt like I, I wanted more of a challenge. So then I started with Jake Manini, my current trainer now, and. Yeah, like everyone else, ever since I've done it, I've been hooked on it, and I love it. You're at Hard Knocks, and is it in Brockton? No, it's Hyde Park, part of Boston. Oh, it's in Hyde Park, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the only one in Brockton. <laughs> oh, wow. I live in Brockton, though. But well, she I, lives in Brockton. Yeah, and then you but travel, I, well, okay, I got that wrong. I, I was thinking, where is Hard Knocks? So, hard, where in Hyde Park? I used to live in Hyde Park. Where is it? Hyde Park, it's kind of close to Cleary Square. Okay. It's yeah. yeah, like the train station, I guess, like behind it. Did it used to be in Business Street? Street. Did it used to be called uh, One Step? We used to. Oh, uh, we used to be in Boston <laughs> Muay Thai Academy in Dorchester. In Dorchester, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. ah. I used to go there too. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I didn't. I hadn't heard of that place either. I was like, oh, there's all these Muay Thai camps around, and I didn't even know. How mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Mo, where do you teach? I teach in uh, Bishop's uh, Boxing and uh, Fitness in West Ridgewater. Okay. All right. Cool. I knew you were around. I know you. I I I said I I met you years ago over at um, Mike Varner's place. I yeah, think. Max oh. Training Center in Stoughton. Correct. Yeah, and then I did see you too holding pads for somebody down in in. Um, I think it it must have been in Rhode Island or Connecticut. Yeah. It was yeah, a, I used to get uh, take my guys to Rhode Island. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of shows in Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you ladies have no idea how lucky you are that to have actually an opponent that will show up for your fight. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. really true. Cause you could get to the event and, and you, you know, you did your weight cuts and, and all that and, and they wouldn't show and you do your fight training, your camp and everything. And they, they did not show and, or you just couldn't get an opponent. So you must be pretty excited to have, um, actually several fights under your belt. I mean, Emily, five fights in one year. And then Maria, how many, how, how, how long have you been competing? Uh, about four years, maybe. Wow. And, and Liz, how long have you been competing? Um, about five, I would say. Really? Wow. Yeah. Did, did you, uh, did any of you ever compete out in New York or in, you know, yeah. once I in- did. How was that? I'm, I'm just thinking, okay. wow, yeah. I just, I was always under the impression from, from uh, some of the, the, some other, speaking to other females that have gone to New York, whatever, that it was very tough batch because they had more opportunities to compete in New York where we, mm-hmm. you know, back here in, in Massachusetts or New Hampshire or whatever, uh, didn't have the opportunities. Did you? Yeah, find- there, is, there is a lot of promotion now around New York, New Jersey. Yeah. Um, Pennsylvania. That's why you now we're here in Massachusetts. It's it's easier for us, and we have a lot of athletes that they don't have to travel all the time to fight uh, outside the state. So we figured we do it here inside the state, where our uh, local fighters can take advantage of it. Right. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, we we weren't having the opportunities in in this state at yeah. all that yeah. others were having, and and it seemed sure. like. That the competition was, you know, you'd go and you're like, oh man, you know, they, they just had the mm-hmm. ring experience. 
and, and that's, that's a huge thing. Do you, do you find that um, now you're feeling a lot more comfortable in the ring since you've had, you know, seven or oh, so yeah. fights? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So um, what um, contributes to your success as a fighter? And we'll start with Maria. Uh, <laughs> I guess just the training. It's, it's like religious almost. You, you train hard every day. Um, it's a lot of mental preparation, a lot of physical preparation, and even some emotional mm -hmm. baggage gets brought in there. Uh, but I do, I don't know if I mentioned it in that little questionnaire that you yeah. sent us, I do this weird thing. I'm, I write fight notes <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's just a list of notes. Every time I have a fight, I do it like a couple of weeks beforehand. I write these notes of what I kind of want to throw mm -hmm. or what I've been working on for that particular opponent. Mm -hmm. And for a couple of days leading to the fight, I reread my notes over and over again. And I just imagine throwing those combos and what it would be like during the fight and you know how they would react and I just have this like mental picture of it all the time when I'm reading them mm. and I usually do this with like a stress cow in my hand <laughs> a stress cow, really? <laughs> yeah or like a little stress gorilla That's my boyfriend got me one and I uh I just squeeze it when I'm imagining you know and I, yeah. I'm trying to think about the fight yeah. and uh it's it's helped a lot actually yeah. for me mentally to get prepared for it that's really cool um kenny florian used to take notes um at the gym and people used to kind of be like what the heck's he doing and i mean this is years you know years back and mm -hmm. and uh it, it, i remember him you know he, he would say that it, it helps him like and it helps him remember too what he's learning <laughs> And then I also heard, uh, like my son, he actually will visualize or say he'll have a set intention. It sounds very similar to what you're doing is um, saying, oh, I'm going to do this, that, or the other thing. Like I'm going to, you know, work specifically on this, you know, for the next few days. And then if he's competing, he's like, that's what I'm going to finish my first opponent with. So that's do you awesome. do that? Do you do that? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, we have certain things that, I throw for certain people, yeah. you know, my coach, he does his homework too. And, uh, he tries to help me out and figure stuff out that I can throw that will probably work for that opponent that I have. Oh, that's cool. Very good. That's really so good. this is actually will help for the tournament. You know, we have each uh, style. You have Elizabeth, you have mm -hmm. Emily, then you have Mary. So they all have different style. So how, how would you prepare for all of them and doing each note for each person, right? Uh, well, it's sort of, I wrote down, like, I wrote down names next to some of those moves and combos. Like, if I, with this person, I want to throw this, you know? Um, That's awesome. But a lot of it's, some of it's really simple stuff, too, just to try and remember that I know how to do it. Because, awesome. you know, you don't want to freeze when you go out there either. As simple as checking the kick and returning. I know that sounds dumb, but <laughs> I write it down every time because I know I know how to do it, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that I can visualize it and do it when I'm out there. So, okay. so Emily, what, how cool. how will you be preparing for this fight and and become and being successful in this in this this tournament? Uh, um, I guess the same as I prepare for all the other fights, um, train hard, work hard. And it makes it a lot easier when you just really love doing it and enjoy training. Like I love like every step of the, the process of a fight camp. And I just, I really, I really like it. So it doesn't really feel like hard work. It's just something that I enjoy doing. Um, but yeah, I, I keep, I keep, um, we keep it simple. I just work harder or try to work harder than whoever I'm in the ring with and, you know, try to put on a good show <laughs> for everyone that's coming out to see us. Cool. And Elizabeth, um, how about you? What, what contributes to your success as a fighter or how do you, you know, how are you planning, you know, this, this, this upcoming match, you know, matches? <laughs> um, 
just to be disciplined, uh, accountable, uh, open-minded in my training, um, being able to adapt because everyone like Mo said is different. Um, a lot of meditation, that's part of my mental preparation because obviously it's stressful. Um, but also ultimately having fun because it is fun, stressful, but you know, we will all work hard, obviously, because we've all been doing it for a while. We're going to do something pretty big, but yeah, just remember to have fun and um, just enjoy myself because that's why I do more Thai because it's fun and I love it. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. What I do. Awesome. So fun seems to be like, you know, the key word it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> I know. I it know. is it's fun until you get to the ring. Yeah. <laughs> no, even in the ring is fun because, like, it's, you have to remember, like, it's so stressful. But like, you've, the it's I don't know how to explain it, but you have to remember it is fun even in the ring, even under you the have stress. To enjoy it. That yeah, it's just something about it. There's something that's drawing us in it, mm -hmm. and we love it. You just have to sometimes remember that, mm. you know. Yeah, I think part of it is it's always even though you're going through like, you know, you're, you're doing your your techniques, you're doing your strikes, you're doing your kicks, your knees, whatever. There's something about it that it's it's always different because you don't know maybe whoever you're going to be sparring or or uh, practicing with, like if they're holding focus mitts, is always something that you're going to learn about yourself in the process. And I think that makes it exciting. And there, there's always some sort of it, it never gets stale in the brain. You know, like whenever you're training, it just doesn't, it doesn't get, you, you don't get bored with it. There's just, I don't know. I think that's why it's fun all the time. It's always exciting. Um, I'd like to welcome two Mary um, Brulatores here and, oh, she just blinked out. Mary, we lost the visual of you. I don't know if you're aware of that, but, uh, oh, there you go. Oop. Sorry. There you go. Not good at Zoom. You're you're good now, so don't press any buttons. You're good. We can hear you. We can see you. Welcome. Um, you're doing great on Zoom. You you get on here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I I I we've already gone through. Uh, most of your your competitors here have given a little bit about why uh, they got into why they like Muay Thai kickboxing, how they got into it. If you would like to give, uh, like, sorry, I missed that. Well, we'd love to hear from you too. How did you? Get <laughs> Muay Thai? Um, I got into Muay Thai when I was 18 and I ran around with a bunch of kids, little punks, and um, kind of the, the older kids that we looked up to all started doing Muay Thai around the same time. So a bunch of us checked it out. And all, most of my friends kind of washed out of the sport, but I got hooked. That's a, that's a great statement. I use that as a as a, a tagline. Get hooked with ShellyDevine.com or something. That's one of my emails because I I couldn't let go of that one because I, I got hooked hitting, hitting bag hitting a heavy bag a long time ago during a cardio kickboxing class. But anyways, nice. um, the other thing too that we they all went around and they answered was what helped contribute to their success as as a fighter. You know, and um, um, all these guys, all my training partners that are cleaning up the gym right now. Yeah, it's all it's all them. Yeah, um, I got a great group of people around me. And that that's where all my success lies, right here. These two. This is this is where my success happens. Yeah. yeah I see. I see Emily. <laughs> yeah, Emily. Say hi, I'm Mohammed. Hi, Emily. Hi. And that's Hello. Oh, and then Claire, Claire, say hi. Hey, Claire. Hello. How Claire's are you? Claire's fighting on the 20th as well. She's yeah. doing good. We just all finished up training. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. That's a, excellent. Wow. So yeah. you're down in Philadelphia, so you're coming all the way up here. Do you, do you have a Road trip. Time, do you have a hard time finding competitors or? Um, <laughs> historically, kind of, but that's why I'm so excited about all these all three of you guys, I'm like really stoked and like whatever happens, we should all fight again and again and then get our numbers up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> um, I, I think the only one that hasn't had a hard time finding a fight is Emily because I know she just said she had fights within five fights in, in, in this year. How about um, and, Liz, did you have a hard time finding fights? Did, did I have a hard time? Um, yeah. 
not too bad. Not lately. I fought three times this year, so it was it was all right. I didn't have too hard of time. Maria, did you ever have a hard time finding a fight? Yeah, I have in the past. Yeah, I would have done a couple of pullouts. And, uh, I would have put. I would have put on your Those hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, any of you can jump in um, on this question. Um, has any of you um, what what Tell us a story of a time when you, in your martial arts journey, uh, when you experienced an aha moment in realization during training or during a fight that you really kind of like, oh, the light bulb went on and I learned something. Um, I had it, I guess, probably in one of my earlier fights. I was fighting, obviously, and in the moment, I went back to my rhythm because I had a couple seconds and you know in muay thai your rhythm is something that you go back to again and again and it's something you do a lot when you shadow box when you're hitting pads when you're bag work and it just kind of calmed me down and centered me and helped me breathe and also helped me focus on my opponent and in that moment i remember seeing my opponent absolutely gassing out and for me it was like ah i'm good you're not and it just made me realize how important even something as simple as keeping your rhythm mm -hmm. can help you in your fight. So that was huge for me, I think. That's good. I like that one. Anybody else want to pipe in? Or do I have to pick one? <laughs> I feel like a school teacher. All right, you're next. <laughs> well, let's hear from Mary. <laughs> okay, Mary, you go. <laughs> um, I think... I've had so many, but uh, I think the biggest aha moment was when I was still learning how to spar, and I had a buddy that just wanted to flow with me, and he was just like, oh, just keep kicking, even if it doesn't, even if it's wonky or if it doesn't land perfectly. Um, learning to flow like that, like, basically teaches you how to train. Um, so that's, that's one that's, you know been my springboard ever since. Cool. Liz or Emily? Mm, oh, uh, I can't. I'm trying to think of like a particular moment, but because there are a lot. Um, simple things, maybe like um, breathing better. I don't know how to, exp like maybe breathing better um, to calm you down, to, to understand, to, to be more calm, I guess. Mm -hmm. um not just in the ring but in training um maybe like certain techniques where i didn't know how to do it or i would keep trying to do it and then my coach would just kind of explain it a certain way like it would use um one word to just to be like think of it as such and such as with one word and once he said that word i was like oh and then i, I would get them the technique mm -hmm. that's i can't really think of anything else yeah, I can remember um, different instructors training me and they all had a different spiel on how to do a roundhouse kick. <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody explained it differently. And then the one time I, I think I had uh, Kru Toy from, from Thailand, he was here visiting and he was training and he showed me how to do a roundhouse kick. And then after he left, somebody else was correcting me and I'm like, oh, don't mess with me. <laughs> you know? But it depends on what, which I didn't get. It was like, depends on what you're hitting, either the bag, a person, or, or the tie pads. It <laughs> depended how you were going to kick, you were going to do execute the roundhouse kick. And it was kind of a silly thing, but I just didn't get that when, when instructors were cueing me on how to kick. And finally, I was like, you know what? You're just going to be kicking things differently and don't really listen to them. Just kind of go with the flow. But how about you, Ellie? What was that? Oh, oh you, were, you, you had asked Emily a question. I was going to ask you a question. But oh, sure. please, go Emily, ahead. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, have you ever read the, the Inner Game of Tennis? I have not. Um, it talks about that issue a lot, like... Um, how, how verbiose coaches can be and how, like, there's a, there's a lot of ways to execute certain things and um, just, like, letting your body do it sometimes. Yeah. 
your body doesn't speak English. So getting all these different directions, your directives, you're kind of just like kind of freeze up. Yeah. Just letting it flow through. I don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll link you to it. You might, you might that take it. That sounds really cool because I think too, it's really important for instructors not to say, no, that's not right. No. <laughs> and, and I got a lot of that too. And that's what really frustrated me at the time. And then, and then once I went to, you know, I had Kutoy showing me, you know, oh, okay. You know, like, and, and it, He's like, yes, yes, that's good, that's good. And I'm like, okay, so I am doing it right, you know? Like, yeah. and that was an aha moment that sometimes the trainers are, get a little too, I don't know, with, with um, how to execute a roundhouse kick or anything for that matter. Sure. So I, think, um, I think a good coach is, has a good balance of not overcoaching an athlete because you can't learn Muay Thai or any kind of mm -hmm. physical sport from a book. You know, you can't have somebody just like tell you like, okay, step two, step three, like, you have to do it and, and learn that way. And, and a good coach is going to know when to give you feedback and, and when to step back and let you kind of figure it out. You can always criticize. Yeah, I, I agree. You know what I mean? You always have to criticize a little bit, then um, give feedbacks and work on it, then adjust yourself. Um, you have to. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. So let's see. Well, How let's hear about the tournament, girls. Let's, let's yeah. talk about the tournament. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, are you all excited? I mean, like, uh, are you having any anybody using the squeeze <laughs> squeeze ball? <laughs> squeeze ball. Attention. <laughs> um, what are you guys doing to, to train for this? Like um, anything in particular, you know, not to give it away, but it really doesn't matter now. You're only a week out. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Everything. <laughs> Lots of sparring, I'd say. Yeah. But this was, this train harder because there's three other guys are all tough as hell. So mm -hmm. you got to be of on cardio. your game. Have you watched, I mean, have you watched videos of each other at all? Are there any out there, you know, that, that are. There's a plenty. The, the oh yeah. Plenty of each plenty of probably some of me. Oh yeah. Huh? There's probably There's some. A lot of, of you, Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super excited. I have been like, I just can't wait. I've been watching, uh, I mean, I have just kind of met Mary now on this podcast, but I've been watching Liz and Maria, um, fight for like way before I was even fighting so I'm like super stoked to be in this tournament with them wow. and Mary you seem cool too so <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> thanks well I thought I follow all of you um I watch a lot of fights um then I watched Mary it's very impressive definitely I never seen her fighting but I watch a lot of videos um very interesting but I watch all of you guys I followed most of you, you guys fought in our show before. Um, I'm very excited, seriously. Um, I choose four of you because I think you guys represent the best on the female tie at this weight, and I just can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. Thanks, Mohammed. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my. So, um, what styles, I know for sit your tongue is, is a tricky style Muay Thai. Um, it, it does a lot of, you know, little, little things that are a little bit different. Is there a difference between like, um, is there something specific like say Bon, Bon Muay Thai that you, you train like in a different way there? Anything that it's noted for? Where there should be. I guess we, we like to be kind of tricky too. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and work really good basics. And mm -hmm. I can't say that it's any different than what the other ladies are doing. And what about uh, Mary? How about your training camp? Um, I would say we have a good mix of like traditional Muay Thai with some Dutch kickboxing influence. Yeah, um, it's kind of like your standard American Muay Thai mm -hmm. style. It's a mm -hmm. blend of the two. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like, I don't know, we're not like known for X, Y, or Z. Try, try to have a well-rounded game. Um, 
Yeah. How about uh, you, Liz? I know the Dutch style is more like just chunky and choppy. And then traditional style, uh, Thai style is a little bit uh, more fluid in the arms, <laughs> a little bit more, <laughs> you know, a little more like. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's hard because we're, even everyone at the gym that I train, my sparring partners are just, everyone is different anyways. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, a mix. Um, but there are like people who, who do train, who come in from other gyms or whatever. They have their own style. Like some people are better with their hands, elbows, knees, whatever. So I guess it's, you just mix it all in. So uh, yeah, we just, I guess to be well, are, we're well-rounded, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. So do you uh, have a lot of fans now, you guys, um, for for the show that are you selling tickets and stuff? Are you guys? Oh, yeah. Whoop. Uh-oh, what happened there? Oh, Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was like, what? That was me. Was that was calling me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are your favorite movies that inspire you f for fight? Like, I know some people will watch, like, Braveheart before a fight. What are you guys doing for that? <laughs> That's a great movie. That's yeah. a great movie. <laughs> it's a great movie to watch if you get ready oh to my God. fight. <laughs> do you guys uh, do any of that? This might be bad, but I like to watch um, this one movie with Ben Stiller. Um, heavyweights? <laughs> 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 because I like the food scene when I have to get away. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to watch. <laughs> I don't know what heavyweights is, but it sounds like a cooking show. Oh my god, Emily, how old are you? <laughs> 24. That's right, that's why. You guys all, heavyweights is a classic. It's about like a little kid's fat camp. That's, yeah. Yeah. Oh. that's a good <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about eating that's really funny <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i can't help it it's one of my go-tos i'll have to check that out that's it's it's a classic it's great it's definitely a, like a feel good um i mean i from i i live in philly i love all the rocky movies like oh, yeah. even the bad ones you run up the so you're gonna be playing rocky mu music <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I am playing you for uh, for the ent entrance <laughs> no 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 <laughs> <laughs> introduction <laughs> oh no <laughs> So how do you oh, guys yeah. deal with, uh, say, failure? Like if you lose a fight or failure in the gym or in life in general, how do you guys deal with that? And has your Muay Thai kickboxing helped with you kind of dealing with that? I don't know. Anybody can go first. <laughs> mm, I'd say hold yourself accountable. Be responsible. Um, try not to make excuses if you lose or if you don't feel good about training or something. You can't blame the other person. You just have to, you know, because I think if you just like always say you, this other person did this, this other person did that, you're not growing from it. And if you kind of like look at yourself and see, okay, I, I did this. Now I can do this and just learn from it. And that's how you grow. Yeah, I agree. I think Muay Thai has just helped me in, in life with, with dealing with stress and, um, cause I can kind of compare it a lot to like training sessions. Cause some weeks, you know, it's, it's such, it's so like, there's so many peaks and valleys in training and especially in a camp and some weeks my cardio feels on point and I'm having really good sparring sessions and I just feel really good overall. And then like the next week I won't change anything, but I'm making mistakes or my cardio doesn't feel great. And I'm like, what happened? And why do I suck right now? And, you know, like, you don't, you just, you know, your body's tired and you just need to like, that's, that's when I know I got to like take some time and just do a little like rest and recovery. And it's kind of like the same thing in like life, like <laughs> when like shit's going wrong and I'm like feeling overwhelmed and it just, Muay Thai just kind of helped me like center myself more and just like breathe and push forward and I'm still learning and 
I'm, I'm getting better at it. And it's just helped me like overall, like calm down a lot. That's awesome. I really like what you said, Liz, about, um, not about owning it and like not trying to blame outside factors, and outside circumstances. I think that's where I've experienced the real growth through martial arts. It's like made me, it's everything else in life feels like a cakewalk compared to this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> When you guys are um, entering the ring, you know, like uh, for a fight and you're dealing with fear, how do you deal with that fear, that onset of fear? And then um, has, you know, what, what has been your greatest challenge to dealing with fear? Dealing with fear? Just embrace it. Just, em just a normal human emotion. Can't fight it. Embrace that shit. Don't. Don't be scared of what's natural, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'd be, I'd be lying if I said I didn't experience it, especially, like, I see the flyer, I, I see people's records, and everyone's, you know, the more experience I get, the more experience my opponents have. It's not, it's not not scary, like, but I think recognizing that it's a privilege to get to do what we do helps. Mm -hmm. Um... And like getting in there with a smile on my face and you know. Uh. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Mary. I think the the like hardest part is just the, the short time like leading up to the fight on on fight night, but then when you like step into the ring, it all kind of like melts away and it's it's so exciting, like having a local show and being able to get an opponent, like you said earlier, you know, that's going to show up and it's going to all the training and the dieting and, you know, it's, it's all the discipline. It's going to be worth it. And that's, that's the payoff for, for the fear and whatever else emotions like you experience before the fight, you, you get to put on a show for everyone else. It's, it is, you're right. It's privileged. Charlie. Mm. If you were, um, is there anything that keeps you up at night? And what would that be? Anybody? Um, probably my muscles, because they... <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so true. You're Sometimes so I'm just wired after training. I usually train in the evenings, and I get really wired, and it's hard to sleep. And then sometimes if I imagine the fights... I'll start twitching, you know, if I don't hope, I don't know if you ladies have had that same problem where you start twitching an elbow or a knee here mm -hmm. and there, and then you wake up. Mid dream. Yeah. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have in your dream, uh, Maria? <laughs> that you've been twitching. Is that Mary, wow. Elizabeth or Emily? <laughs> All three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in general, just battle like, right now. <laughs> Same time. It, it doesn't matter who it is. It's just sometimes when you're imagining things in your head and your brain will Ooh. turn off, you know? <laughs> so, we're, yeah. We're sitting here and we're having a nice chat, and you guys are going to be like game face in about a week's time. And. <laughs> <laughs> and you're looking at your opponents and you don't know which one. Who would you like to fight the most? Like, who do you definitely want to, like, kick their ass? <laughs> oh, why you got to put it like that? <laughs> I put them on the spot now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, any of the three of you guys, I, I see us all as athletes and we're testing ourselves against one another. And, like, you know, before, during, and after, we're all kindred. So, like, I obviously I know we're gonna fight, but that's that's a thing. It's just within those few minutes, and then it it's not it's not personal. It's not like the UFC where 
I want to call you out. <laughs> to me, that's so, it's corny. It's not really how I feel. And I'm going to, you know, I expect you guys to, to fucking bring it because I will be in. That's, it's just a, it's a, it's an athletic competition, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. I agree. I agree. That's the beauty about the uh, Muay Thai. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. so much respect between the opponent, mm -hmm. even before or after. Mm -hmm. It's an, we never had any incident before um, when all the show we had before, uh, just because it's uh, the nature of uh, the Thai. Mm -hmm. It's just so much respect. I mean, uh, no disrespect to the other sports, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Uh, thai, it's more disciplined. Mm -hmm. uh, fighters or coaches mm -hmm. and on even fans even our fans mm -hmm. i mean we go to mirrors people are like um, the law down there the police they love our show they're like why your fans are so disciplined i think just because of the fighters and the fans and families they're all the same now you see you guys in the ring you know what i mean you don't you don't throw fit when you lose you know what i mean it's all about respect so these kind, they go the same way with it. Uh, it's it's awesome. I, I really respect that. Nice. Well, I don't know if female relationships and so, sports are different, but I just think that, like, all of the girls that I've gotten in there, well, like, they all text me, like, on, on my next fight night, like they wish me good luck. They text me afterwards. Like we're all like we didn't really know each other before. And, like I'm I'm kind of like friends with all of them, I guess in a way. Um, you know, we don't hang out, but I, like we talk like on the internet all the time, and um, I think that's so cool. Like I've made a lot of good friends just like in the Muay Thai community, and I've noticed that like specifically with like between females that it seems like there's a lot of um, support and community because I think we're all like kind of trying to get, you know, the, the respect and uh, attention um, from the fans that for a long time we weren't getting. Mm, I agree. There, I get a lot of support sure. from females I fought before and it's great. I talk to them on Facebook regularly and it's it's nice to feel that mm. it's a small community too like you know we have like to be um hostile is kind of like it's there's no point to it mm -hmm. um yeah like i said it's just small like we kind of like all know each other through social media and stuff and fight within the camps fight this teammate and I mean, um, this other person and your teammate fights that person, blah, blah. So, but it, it, we all like help each other grow and just, I don't know, I guess that's why there's more respect because you kind of see that. No fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a great answer. It's funny because I think when people take some form of martial arts training, whether it's, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mixed martial arts, karate, Muay Thai kickboxing, American kickbox, anything, um, you know, you're, you're in it to be a badass. You're, you know, like you want to have that excitement. And, but once you learn how to um, fight, I guess, you don't, I mean, unless you're competing, you really don't want to, this is my experience. I don't know if it's yours or not, but you don't want to actually, you know, be out in the world and pick a fight. You'd rather, you know, use some communication skills, even though you know how to maybe take care of yourself and put yourself out of harm's way. Say if something was coming at you, say you're out and about and somebody picks a fight with you or, or tries to hurt you in some way, you know how to defend yourself. And I found that it's something that I would prefer to avoid if it was real, like if it was a real altercation, you know, outside of a ring or outside of a cage, outside the gym. Do you find that that, that is how you feel about it now that you're more equipped that you would probably avoid other than getting into the ring? You would avoid a fight. I would say so. Yeah. I don't think I want to get into a fight that would actually leave me injured. Mm. <laughs> 
And yeah. I don't want to injure anyone else either for that matter. Uh, yeah. It's just not something that I look forward to doing ever. <laughs> Ditto. Yeah. Street fight, anything goes. So there's no like rules. Like people can use like weapons and shit. It's like, mm -hmm. it's not even worth it. You know, usually. Yeah. Well, e even if you were defending yourself, though, I mean, it would be, I mean, some people will take it as, as um, I think guys might have the mentality to get into a fight or a brawl more so, but for women, it's more to, for self-defense or self-protection. Did any of you feel like you got into, you know, you know, doing kickboxing to defend yourself in case of being out in the world, you were confronted with some sort of altercation? Oh, for uh, sure. Well, that's why I guess I wanted to do Muay Thai. Like I said before, I'd never gotten really hit in the face, so I wanted to know what it was like. Mm -hmm. That way I wouldn't necessarily be in shock when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> you know? Anybody else? No? No, no. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really think, you know, I don't really think of Muay Thai as like a self-defense in the way that self-defense is marketed to women. Um, but I do think in the most proactive sense that it's self-defense like it it's I started when I was like a dumb teenager I didn't know how to take care of myself I didn't know how to cook go grocery shopping like recover stretch like I didn't know I wouldn't I wasn't doing sports like I I didn't realize you know I would age and my body needed maintenance so in in those ways and like in a spiritual mental health way it is it is self-defense from this world we have to live in mm. so with your training and going into say even a muay thai kickboxing camp i know in thailand it's only until recently that women have you know within the last maybe 10 years or i could be even less than that that women have actually been allowed to get into the ring um, and oftentimes some camps there, and I know I went to one where they had two separate rings, one for the girl, for the women and one for the men, and they didn't allow women to be in the ring and they didn't for a period of time train. Um, so have any of you ever felt, I mean, <laughs> who hasn't, but like, um, maybe could share a story where you felt inadequate because you were a woman and, or were told no and how you dealt with it. Anybody want to start first? Um, Go ahead, Emily. I, I think when, I, if I'm talking to somebody who isn't really familiar with martial arts, um, doesn't train, doesn't, doesn't really watch any kind of martial arts, when they um, see me and I tell them that, you know, I compete and I, I, the, the biggest, like, I, I get like these questions that I just, sorry, I'm like <laughs> rambling, but I get these questions like, oh, like, do you get hit in the face? Like, does it hurt? And I'm just like, what do you think, like, fighting is? Like, what, why are you even asking me that? Like, you wouldn't be asking me this, like, if I was a dude, but um you know people will say stuff like oh like why do you do that like isn't that dangerous mm. like, yeah like i'm the danger <laughs> <laughs> i'm the <Whoa>. danger <laughs> i love it <laughs> there's like, a lot of like tough women now and your sleeve and kick you need it that's for sure like what? skills it's good to have skills Definitely in this world, you know, you, you, you develop a level of confidence when you're out there on your own. I know one, of, one time, just to add to what you just said, Emily, was I was in Thailand um, doing some training over there and I was up in um, Chiang Mai and there was a fight camp, uh, 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 a nice gym up there or whatever, but I um, was having breakfast or something at a little place and I sat down and sometimes you sit down at with different people at tables and you just never know who you're going to sit with. So I was talking to this guy and, um, I, he's, he saw my bags and he's like, Oh, you, you do the, you know, you do the, the kickboxing here. And I'm like, yeah. And his assumption was that I was a lesbian. 
<laughs> went straight to that. You're like, you know, and I was like, no, actually I'm not. But like, you know, does that really matter? You're making an assumption because I like kickboxing that I would be a lesbian. And I'm like, that doesn't, why do you just jump to that assumption? <laughs> I was like, only, only, you know, certain types of women are going to do this, which is, is totally untrue. But I, I was so blown away by that. <laughs> I was like, really? Really? Yeah, I think like it's it's hard. Um, you know, women are always having to fight these like stereotypes, and yeah. it's getting better. Like, w- like the the public just hasn't been like educated enough. But with these mm-hmm. like, local shows, like they're they're being educated about martial arts, mm-hmm. so it, it is getting better. But I think um, like the general like uneducated um, opinion is that there's two kinds of women in martial arts there's these you know really like masculine um women who are just like completely stripped of their femininity and they're they're lesbians or they're you know just there's like men can't sexualize them and so they that's how they must be able to fight because they're not they're not really like women you know what i mean um and then the other type is the like the opposite these really sexualized um women who are really pretty and can fight but men don't take them seriously um because they're really pretty and they're like oh you know that's cool that they fight but they don't really fight you know they're like yeah I i think those are the two Come into one of the gyms and you'll find out that they really fight. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I go up against one of you ladies and they'll be like, oh, <laughs> right? I don't even yeah. think that those two like stereotypes um, are even the majority. Like there's so many different kinds of female fighters and I don't, I don't like, I mean, there's, there's not even like types like that's, that's just so I was silly. Just blown, yeah, I was blown away that, that, you know, you're getting categorized. That's the only type of person or whatever. And I was yeah. just like, wow, that's just not right. <laughs> Even here, I don't know. Anybody else want to go with that question? Um, mm-hmm. Well, I haven't had a lot of stories. It's, it's happened my entire life, I'm sure. But um, every time someone's pretty much told me, no, you can't, I kind of just say, watch me. I'll do it just because you told me I can't do it. I'm going to do it right now in front of you Mm -hmm. just so you can see me do it. Nice. So that's kind of like, I I would tear my nose off to spite my face, I guess. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Mm, A lot of people say like stupid things like, um, oh, you fight, you don't want to, you're going to ruin your pretty face or something about Mm -hmm. the way I look in terms of fighting. It's like, that has nothing to do with whatever you know what I'm saying I just it just annoys me like like I don't like to see girls get hit like a lot of people will say that mm-hmm. if I tell them about it like it's just it's not right or whatever I'm like it's like we're 2018 like get with the times yeah they're still saying that I, I can remember that too a lot of people saying that mm-hmm. it's getting better yeah. I think yeah yeah for sure people who actually like follow martial arts are or train like they're I mean everyone that I've met like they're just awesome like all the guys at my gym like are they don't treat me like a female fighter like they treat me like an athlete you know like just like they treat all the other guys in the gym I mean they're the best like I think it's it's definitely getting better for sure. And events like this really help help it to, to get better because it becomes more of a norm instead of the the not norm. You know, like, when, well, you don't see women fighting. You'll never see women fighting. Now we're seeing it. And this tournament definitely exposes that even more, which is really in, in a great way. Mm-hmm. Um, gives you guys an opportunity to, to actually be seen, heard compete you can show your skills you can showcase your skills um and people get a chance to see wow what a great fighter and they're looking at you in that regard instead of oh she's a pretty girl or oh she's this or oh she's that or you know like it's it's like oh she's a great fighter it's really awesome so um as role models you know you, you you're at gyms now you're competing um 
you're 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 all amateur fighters but you're competing do you do you see yourself as a role model and will you take it further will you go pro with this eventually and you know how do you see your role in this for future you know women coming up and um and and two you know um maintaining you know whoever wins this uh tournament how do you see yourself kind of you know presenting yourself to uh fight fans and and uh other people who are going to be watching you gotta think about these things ladies yeah <laughs> you do <laughs> um i don't know uh what my plans are future wise but uh i just want to inspire people that's like a huge thing for me i i do and especially women who don't think they can do things uh, like you said before, just because they're women. I, I want them to know that they can, mm -hmm. you know, if I can do it, they can definitely do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to ever think they can't. Yeah. And it's never too late to start. I was at oh, yeah. a BG, I was at a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament and there was a woman there who's in her fifties competed. She was only six months into training in BJJ, but they had like a, you know, a, a, one of those new kind of brackets or whatever for newbies to come in and she did it and she didn't win or anything, but she was just like, I'm here, I'm doing this. And this stuff inspires that. And you guys even being in this martial art and doing this, this inspires that for other, yeah, other uh, females. True. There is no age limit on uh, martial arts, really. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old you get and you're still doing martial arts or even people who just want to star or just, you know, uh, discipline and learn and just to try and uh, to learn more about them. Mm. The sports, it still is no age. I always tell people, I have a lot of people that come in, you know, older, young, mm -hmm. even the oldest they got, I mean, they were like, well, can I still do this? Yes, you can. Yeah. It, it, there's no age limit for uh, martial arts, really. You can still learn. I hope we're you can compete also. Yeah. I, I hope we're inspiring people. I hope like people are coming to the show and whether they're women or men or kids or whatever, I hope they're coming to the show and being like, Oh my god, I like I wanna do this. And I hope that, like coming up to you or one of the fighters or someone, they're like, How do I how do I start doing this? Like I hope that that's the reaction that we're getting out of the fans. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Everyone should do martial arts. Yeah. Oh absolutely, I think so. Totally. You get like the, the uh, multi-dimensional uh, skill set through martial arts. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Who was just trying? Somebody was just went by. They look like, like someone with a hood on the outside. No, Sarah. She just came back um, from the casino. She oh, get her on. Time. Have her peek in. Trying to she sneak out the back. The camp. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> howdy, congratulations there, lady. Oh, thank you. Yay. Hey, Sarah, congrats. Thanks, Mohammed. Yeah, Sarah's quite the, quite the Muay Thai kickboxer, man. She can totally throw down. <laughs> That's awesome. So do, did everybody kind of get any, do we get everybody on that one? Where's Mary? <laughs> yeah, Mary, role model. I'm right here. See yourself as a role model. She disappeared. <laughs> Driving, I think. Like, you know, she's multitasking. No, I, I, I'm in the passenger seat. Oh, okay. Oh, we're driving. We should uh, close like, this video. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not safe. Yeah. Uh, no, not, no kind of role model is on the phone and driving. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Um, <laughs> Public safety announcement. From us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, um, I, I coach at my gym. We have a women's kickboxing program, and I love it. And There's a lot of different kinds of women that come in. Um, I also teach, like, um, an LGBT Muay Thai class once a week and a lot of folks who wouldn't want to, who on paper wouldn't seem interested in, in what we do in Muay Thai do come in and they get something out of it. And that's, um, it's a huge source of 
joy for me to watch people like discover their own power. So I guess in that way, I am a role model. Nice. Cool. Do any of you um, also teach? Emily, I know you do. Maria, do you teach too? Yeah, I do. Yep. I teach a couple classes a week. Nice. So, um, strictly Muay Thai? Uh, yeah, I do uh, Muay Thai. I do one women's cardio class and that one's a lot of fun. They're, they're some awesome, awesome women in that class. And I do private sometimes. I actually do privates with a 63-year-old, 64. Yeah, and she's a cancer survivor, and she's she's pretty damn awesome. Wow, that's cool. Nice. And Emily, are you still teaching? Yeah, I um I teach cardio classes, mm -hmm. like cardio kickboxing. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. It takes there's it takes like the fighting element uh, away from it more. It's you know it's more the the people there are just trying to have fun. They're not trying to like make it big. They're not trying to like get into the UFC. They're just like <laughs> yeah, fun, burn some calories and uh, it's, they're cool. I like it. That's cool. Liz, do you teach at all or? Um, I help run class like um, the last few days. I help run class, um, holes for people. I don't really teach a full class. I uh, used to, but not, not lately. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to thank you all for being on the show, but I'd like you to each give maybe a little shout out to anybody that you need to or where people could get tickets. If, if they need to, you can just kind of give you your own little infomercial. We'll go right down the line. We'll start with Emily and then we'll go down to Liz and Mary and then Maria, okay? Um, shout out? Yeah, shout out and then where people might be able to get tickets. If you, I don't know if they, they sell the tickets. Do you guys sell tickets at your gym? or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, at City Bone, um, I have tickets there. Uh, so I guess shout out to City Town <laughs> and my coaches, obviously my team. Uh, love all of them. Um, and you can get a hold of me through Instagram um, or call me. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to work on that one, honey. <laughs> You're doing more interviews. You got to have like your, your, your thing going. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm testing you all. All right, Liz, you go, honey. Shout out to uh, <laughs> my coaches, Jake and Bill, and my training partners, Edie, Jesse, everyone else at the gym. Um, we have some tickets left at the gym. Um, you can ask me on Facebook by my full name, Elizabeth Silvera, or Instagram, Eliza Fresh, E L I Z A F R E S H. Uh, I think I covered it all. Is that, was that good? That's <laughs> okay. being the first one, right? right? I had a little practice. <laughs> first one. Oh, first one. Oh, now I know what to say. <laughs> all, right. all right, Mary, you're up. <laughs> okay. Um, I will shout out my battle buddies for October 20th, uh, my training partner, Claire Morton, and uh, my other training partner, Emily Marino, who is taking a last minute bout for next Saturday. Um, tickets are available online. Just type in no boundary fights, look for October 20th. And if you use the code Mary, you get a 5% discount. Ooh, ooh. That was good. That was good. I like that. That's, yeah. that's good. <laughs> oh yeah. This, this, I, so I need like I need commercial for no boundary, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Right. Maria, you're up, honey. Oh joy. Uh, I guess I would shout out to my teammates at uh, Bomb Muay Thai, and that's where you can get tickets as well. And one teammate in particular, um, Mad Dog Kelly, you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> and my coach, big shout out to him for getting me prepared for this. Uh, and yeah, you can look me up on Facebook at Maria Criticos, uh, or again, you can get tickets at Bomb Muay Thai. Awesome. I want to thank you again for all being on the show. Uh, Mo, would you like to say anything about the show coming up? And Yeah, definitely. Um, I just want the fans to come in and support uh, this women's and the four women's tournament. It's the first ever in USA. 
Um, it's never happened before, and I want more friends to come in and support all these local fighters and even uh, support Mary too, of course, they have to. Um, and, uh, and come in these uh, two title fights for grab, um, and it's going to be a great fight. We have uh, 14 bouts, um, and it'll be a great show, and I would love to see more people come in and uh, uh, contact these local fighters for tickets or go online and get uh, your tickets. Don't wait till last minute. Awesome. They always do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and thank you, girls. Definitely, you guys uh, you. made this yeah. happen. Yeah, this is awesome. I can't wait to see you guys all fight. I'm, I'm kind of like, who's going to fight who? Can't wait to, to see. I'm excited. What what happens? How are you going to do that in the ring, or like, are they going to pick out like? Or, yeah, we can do it. Hat? We can do in the we can do in the ring, and when they they come in front of the fans, and and they pick numbers, and I know which number they're going is going to go with wow. other ones. Um, so it should be mysterious. It'll be that, awesome. It's good. That's very cool. <laughs> We're going to keep it entertaining. Very entertaining. Everybody's going to be like, "Oh wow, she's going to fight her." That sounds really <laughs> like very fun. And then it. It's a little, you know, a little excitement for you guys too as well. So um, back to your, I hope you guys are, you know, whatever you got plans for this evening. I want to thank you again for being on the Evolve WMMA show today. I will see you all next week on the 20th. It's October 20th at um, the Melrose, is it? Yes, Melrose Memorial Hall. Melrose Memorial Hall. And what time do the doors open? The door open at 6 6 and they open the door at five and we oh. start at 6 30. okay so the fight start at six what time is the tournament going to start do you think so the, we're going to do a uh, one fight to open the show and the second and the third fight that's the tournament great so you have time to get there park and and get into get your seats and stuff and uh yes. Doors open at 5 p.m. Awesome. So yeah, next don't miss week, the tournament. Don't miss that tournament. I'm not. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Doors are open at 5. Show starts at 6 at the Melrose Memorial Hall. I want to thank you all again for being on the show. It was really a pleasure to get to know all of you. We're going to have some fans now. You know, I'll be sending you uh, this. Um, this this will be published on Monday. So I'll be sending you guys some some links to that, too. Thanks again. Awesome. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. If you like what you heard today and are eager to hear more, remember to subscribe or download on iTunes. Or you can get on our email list by um, going to the website, Evolve WMMA, and signing up for our free three-part video series on 10xing your energy without destroying your body. Or you can see us on YouTube at Women's MMA. We're also on Spotify, which is, find that at Evolve Women's MMA. So uh, give us a shout out too. Maybe, uh, you know, write a review on iTunes. That would be really super. Or you can simply follow us at facebook.com backslash I love WMMA. This is Shelly Devine. Until next time, thanks for listening.